I'm Dr. Larry Carnes, and welcome to Books of the Month. We're so excited and glad that you could join us for another exciting episode. And we have a very, very special guest with us, Miss Barbara Vinson. And we're looking at this fascinating book, A Life of Faith. Miss Vinson, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well, thank you. Take some time and introduce yourself to our viewing audience. Well, um, I'm, <laughs> I, um, gosh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm married, um, had two children. Um, I have uh, a granddaughter and two great grandchildren. And um, they're the love of my life. They keep me young. <laughs> um, and um, I was thinking a long time about writing this book. And it was in my head for a long time. And then I finally started writing it down. Okay. And um, so I uh, I did it because um, my friends and my, my church friends always told me that um, I was an inspiration to them. Um, partly because of my children, partly because of my health. I would get down to where I couldn't do anything, and then I'd bounce back up again. And um, I believe in the power of prayer, and I'm sure that that had a lot to do with me being here today. Um, Absolutely. I've almost died many times. <laughs> so wow. You know, I thank I, God I, that I'm still around. Yes, I see such a fascinating story here. Uh, it says something, a lot had happened in Barbara Vincent's life. So simply putting pen to paper would take time. However, her story was one she knew would inspire people facing trials like her. Thus, her memoir, A Life of Faith, was written. A Life of Faith shares with readers Barbara's experiences and journey in faith, spanning several generations of her life and how they weathered life's storms. Wow, that is so powerful. And you say your, your friends say that you're an inspiration to them. Talk to us about that and these challenges that you faced in life. First of all, um, after I got married, um, I had a, a difficult time conceiving a child and I really wanted one. So I prayed to God to give me a child. Well, finally, after about three years, uh, my daughter was born, and um, she was born with um, broken bones, and she was in traction for the first couple of months of her life, um, and she also had broken arm while I was carrying her that had healed before she was born, Okay. and so... Um, the doctor said that she had osteogenesis imperfecta, which is um, poor, poor bones. They break easily. And so uh, then it wasn't long, a couple of days, the doctor came back and said, no, it wasn't that, that it was, um, uh, oh, she, what is it? Um, anyways, it was something else that mm -hmm. um, when the child is, diagnosed they usually don't live for longer than two years and the doctor said we probably wouldn't take her home from the hospital My. well we ended up doing that but we decided that maybe we'd have another start having trying to have another one since it took so long to have her only it didn't take so long <laughs> <laughs> so they were only 18 months apart and um jason when jason was born he was born with broken bone he had a broken arm and so um we thought, well, we have two children that aren't going to live. So we thought, well, we wouldn't have any more. Well, then um, I prayed. Uh, I thought, well, I, I asked God for these children, and now I'm not going to get to have them very long. And so I asked God, please, <laughs> please let them live. And yes. they did, because the final diagnosis, after we took them to um, another hospital, they were diagnosed with um, congenital myopathy of the morphologically distinct type, which meant that 
Uh, they were born with poor, uh, poor muscles and that uh, the muscles look different under the microscope. They didn't look the way they're supposed to. Okay. So they never did walk, but they learned to scoot. And um, I took them to the uh, Children's Learning Center when they were very little. And I met Marion there and we became good friends. And her daughter, Rhonda, couldn't walk either. And so, um, but the, all the kids could scoot. So one day, um, Marion brought Rhonda over to play and they got all the toys out. They were all over the floor and they got into the closet and managed to knock the um, vacuum cleaner over onto Rhonda's head. So I go in there, I get in the closet and I said, okay, Rhonda's mom is going to be here pretty soon. You need to go and pick up all the toys. Well, these three blonde haired, blue eyed children looked up at me and said, we can't do that. We're handicapped. And I said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, you didn't seem to be that handicapped when you got them out. So they, <laughs> I, uh, they, still, they insisted that they were handicapped. So I went and got a garbage bag and I started putting the toys in the garbage bag and naming them off. And finally they said, okay, okay, we'll do it. I said, boy, that handicap got cured fast. <laughs> So they were so, using that's, um, that 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 as an excuse. Wow! <laughs> when it came to doing something that you had told them to do, they used it as an excuse. But when they were doing something that they enjoyed doing, they had the capacity to overcome it. <laughs> that is so powerful! Powerful! Wow! Interesting! Interesting story here, and so. When we look at your story and navigate this journey, I see that you have a, a, a PhD in guidance and psych psychological services. What drove you to pursue that? And, and what's the motivating force behind that? I had a professor at the university who uh, said that I should do it. And then um, by that time, I was married to Brock. And Brock uh, encouraged me to do it. So I decided, well, what if I'm going to get a PhD, what will I get it in? So I talked to the professor because I had already uh, gotten two degrees in um, special education. Mm -hmm. So he suggested that I go into school psychology. Uh, school psychology is part of the PhD program that I went through. So I, I was a school psychologist for a while. Wow. And I loved it. That, that made my day <laughs> that he appreciated what I'd done for him. It, you know, um, I see here that you've dedicated your life to working with parents of children with disabilities. How encouraging is it for parents to know that here you are a person who can assist them in helping to understand some of the challenges that they're gonna face with their children. How encouraging is that to them? And what, what joy do you get from doing that? I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the parents a lot. And um, I, I got a lot from them as much as they got from me because I was also a parent of uh, children with disabilities. Yes. And so um, we would help each other. And I taught a class at the university on uh, working with parents. And uh, I had, uh, I was working with uh, college students who were interested in special education. Okay. And so um, the, I invited these parents to come in and talk to them about what it was like to be a parent of a handicapped child. Because mm. sometimes I think that teachers don't understand exactly what it's like and uh, how to help them and their children. Yes. So that yes. I enjoyed that class. Educating on what it's like to be the parent of a child that needs some attention and special attention, because if it's not your world, there is a possibility that we will become insensitive to those things that are so desperately needed. That's good, good, good. 
So as you begin to educate people on what it's like to be the parent of a child that needs extra attention, of a child with disabilities, what are the results and how helpful has that been to those parents in navigating this journey? My daughter and I would go to a, a classroom and Jody would talk about what it was like to be the child. And I think they need that too. Wow. Because sometimes they don't understand. But my son, um, he had he was hard of hearing. And he had to have his hearing aids fixed. So he went to school with no hearing aids. And he, I got a call um, that I should come to the school because Jason was sick. So I went to the school. I went to the nurse's office. And I found out Jason wasn't really sick. He was just very upset because the teachers didn't understand he couldn't hear them. Yes. So when... So he said, I want to go home. And I said, no, we're going to go talk to the principal. So actually, I talked to the vice principal, and I told her what was going on. And she said, um, well, Jason, do you want me to go with you and explain to the teachers, or do you want to go by yourself? And he said, I want to go home. <laughs> I said, that wasn't one of your options. <laughs> so um, talked to the teachers, and then then they understood better. But what upset me was that they couldn't listen to Jason. And when he was telling them, I can't hear you. Oh. That they just insisted that he, like the teacher was talking to him, explaining to him how to do a, a math problem. Wow. And so he was looking at her, reading her lips. And she said, no, look at the page. <laughs> he said, wow. Now, I can't do we, both. Have, we have two minutes. You see how time flies. We have two minutes left. Please share your <laughs> share your contact information, website, email, and how people can get in touch with you. Take 60 seconds and do that for us. Okay. Um, well, I have a web, um, I don't have a website. I have uh, an email. Okay. And it is B Vinson at go G O dot McCormick, M C C O R M I C K dot E D U. Excellent. So now, and of course, we know that they can get this powerful book by going to Amazon and, and, and they can get the book. It is a fascinating book. I want to thank you. I know, you know, in chapter one, you use Job 36. Our time is going. We want to thank you for being our guest. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Books of the Month. Listen, we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Vincent, for being our guest. Have a great day.